Hey bro, how high should my protein intake per day be when cutting? I've heard somewhere that 0.8 grams per pound of body weight per day is enough to get ripped. Yeah, sounds great bro. But I'm not convinced. I don't want to lose muscle mass when I'm going through my cut. Should I just eat 2 grams per pound of body weight instead? Just to be safe? There's a lot of question marks surrounding protein intake, especially when it comes to fat loss. What's certain though, is that a high protein intake is supported to be beneficial when looking to lose fat for two main reasons. To prevent muscle loss and to improve satiation. So it makes sense to turn up the protein intake as high as possible when going on a cut, right? Well, actually, when taking a look at the whole body of research on all of the micronutrients, surprisingly, the protein intake doesn't need to be as high as what's often advertised. In fact, by keeping the protein intake at the lowest scientifically recommended intake, you can take advantage of a few awesome benefits without much or any negatives often associated with a lower protein intake. But before looking at the benefits of having a lower protein intake when cutting, let's first take a look at why a very high protein intake is overrated for fat loss in the first place. According to Dr. Eric Helms, who has done extensive research on protein intake for caloric restricted lean athletes, the optimal protein intake per day are between 1.8 to 2.9 grams per kilogram, where the intake is scaled upwards with the severity of caloric restriction and leanness. Now, what's important to mention here is that these numbers are for already lean and well-trained athletes who are in a caloric deficit. Not only that, these athletes are also resistance training with very large workloads and muscle breakdown. This means that for us who are looking to get a lean and muscular summer physique at around 8-10% body fat, the protein intake doesn't need to be as high. In fact, the protein intake for individuals that don't have a huge workload and large muscle breakdown have been highly exaggerated in the fitness industry. Likely because where there's money, there's also marketing. The common belief is that since protein, or more specifically amino acids, are the building blocks of muscle, then a higher protein intake during a cutting phase must also mean better muscle retention. This however isn't necessarily true, because eating protein doesn't stimulate muscle growth, training does. Amino acids just allow the muscle growth to take place after it's been stimulated by training. Okay, so if a large protein intake isn't required for preserving muscle mass, what about satiation? Well, when it comes to satiation, higher intakes of protein only helps with fullness up to a point. Eventually, as you raise proteins, carbs and fat must come down to still maintain a caloric deficit. And if carbs and fat come down too much, so does satiation. And a quick side note here, if you utilize intermediate fasting when cutting, which I recommend highly, you require even less total protein to cover both the muscle loss and satiation problems following a fat loss phase. It's commonly believed that when we are not eating, i.e. fasting, muscle gets turned over into glucose in order to fuel the body. This however isn't true. Physiological studies on fasting has concluded that protein is not burnt for glucose during short-term fasting. In fact, it's quite the contrary. Short-term fasting has been shown to actually improve muscle retention via increased levels of growth hormone in the body during the fasted period. And this reduces the amount of protein you actually need in a caloric deficit when it comes to muscle retention. Furthermore, by utilizing intermittent fasting, satiation is no longer going to be a problem. Because when you are eating 2-3 to three huge meals during the second part of the day, you can achieve the same level of fullness on less total protein. Okay, the protein intake that I recommend are at the lowest end of Eric's recommendations, which are 1.8 grams per kilogram of body weight per day or 0.8 grams per pound of body weight per day. Setting your numbers at the lowest scientifically recommended intake, especially when utilizing intermittent fasting, is smart. This will allow you to preserve muscle mass and also feel very satiated on the cut, while you simultaneously take advantage of the following four benefits of having a lower protein intake. Number 1. Higher testosterone levels A caloric deficit combined with a low body fat percentage will always reduce testosterone levels to some extent. That's been well established by research. But what a lot of people don't know is that the macronutrient profile of the food you eat also plays a huge role in regulating your hormonal balance. 
Each of the macronutrients supports the endocrine system and an overall healthy functioning of the body. And the current research shows us that a diet that's low in carbs are bad for testosterone levels. In this study by Anderson et al, made on low carb dieting, they found that testosterone concentrations in seven normal men were consistently higher after 10 days on a high carbohydrate diet than during a high protein diet. This study as well as many others show that low carb diets reduce testosterone in men. Research also shows that a diet low in fat are bad for testosterone levels as well. In this study from the Department of Clinical Chemistry in Finland, they first had males eat a diet where 4% of the energy came from fat. This diet was then replaced for a 6 week period by another diet, this time containing 25% of energy from fat. Then a few days after they switched the diets, they observed a great reduction in serum testosterone levels for all males in the study, which correlated directly to the lower intake of fat. So, just as with carbs, having a low fat intake has been shown to reduce testosterone in men. Not only in the study mentioned, but many others as well. And lastly, a diet that's very high in protein has also been shown to be bad for testosterone levels. Now, protein intake doesn't reduce testosterone levels in and of itself. The amino acids in protein actually plays a role in testosterone production. But an increase in protein will always accompany a decrease in carbs and fat, which are the two most important factors for endocrine support, especially when you are in a caloric deficit required to lose fat. This simply means that a very high intake of protein ruins the hormonal balance indirectly. So, perhaps there are something to the saying, just eat a plain regular homemade diet. Okay, so the second benefit of a lower protein intake is that you will get better training performance. By having a lower protein intake, your carbs can be higher. And the higher intake of carbs has been shown repeatedly by research to improve strength training performance in the gym. In fact, multiple studies show that fatigue and lower performance are both associated with low carbohydrate diets that cause glycogen depletion. Other studies have also shown that low levels of glycogen may actually cause overtraining. And this is especially true when you are in a caloric deficit trying to lose body fat. Because a caloric deficit is also a recovery deficit. So having decent amounts of carbs in your diet is imperative when it comes to strength training performance when cutting. In fact, your performance in the gym is more important than your protein intake for fat loss. Okay, so benefit number three is that you will get tastier meals. Don't you agree that protein without fat and carbs are just boring as hell? The meals that we define as delicious actually contains a balanced intake of all the macros, such as burgers, pizzas and various pasta dishes, etc. The more protein you include in your diet, the harder it will be to have these kind of meals, simply because you max out on your carbs and fats before you hit your protein intake. Okay, so let's look at the fourth and final benefit of having a lower protein intake when cutting, which is that you will achieve better overall well-being. One of the biggest benefits of having more fat and carbs are that both of them improves your well-being. And if you can feel well while in a caloric deficit, it's much more likely that you will stick to it. It's actually been shown that ingesting a moderate dose of low fiber carbohydrates have mood elevating effects and can actually reduce your sense of hunger and food consumption. This has to do with increased levels of serotonin in the brain, following an alternation in the plasma tryptophan ratio, which takes place after a moderate intake of carbs. And with a higher intake of carbs as opposed to protein, more tryptophan and serotonin crosses into the brain, which results in less food focus and increased well-being. Same goes with fat, having a decent intake of healthy fats in your diet will make you feel more satisfied after a meal which further reduces hunger and thus promotes fat loss. All in all, having a lower protein intake will improve your health, performance and enjoyment when cutting without impairing muscle growth, at least if your goal is to get in a great looking bead shape at around 8-10% body fat. The best results seems to be achieved if you combine a balanced intake with intermittent fasting as well. Okay, so the macro split that will best help you achieve these benefits are the following. 25 to 30% protein, 30 to 35% fat and 35 to 40% carbs. Okay, so this was just an amazingly funny video to create and uh, sure it took me a lot of time creating it. I think that I spent like 40 hours or something on this, but that's fine because I enjoyed making it a lot and 
More importantly, I hope that you find it valuable as well. Now, I'm very, very interested in knowing what your take on uh, having a lower protein intake when cutting are, because that's what I've done during my latest cut now, and I've felt like incredible and maintained all my strength in the gym and muscle mass and so on as well. So it's definitely no, no trouble at all going a little bit lower in protein intake. In fact, I think that uh, all of these benefits on higher testosterone, training performance and so on, will actually outweigh uh, the potential negatives of a lower protein intake. So let me know all of this down in the comment section guys and don't be afraid to start a discussion. Now also if you like the video make sure to give it a like and share it with a friend who you think eats way too much protein. And as always make sure you hit that subscribe button as well to get notified each time I release a new video which currently are on Wednesdays. So thanks for watching guys and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye!